YouTube, what is going on? My name is Sweat. If you guys are new, and welcome back to another Apex Legends video. In today's video, guys, we're going to be reviewing a Platinum 2 gameplay, and this is right after the rank split, so we got demoted back into Platinum 2. But I'm going to be reviewing this game. It has no uh, communication between me and my teammates. It's just a basic gameplay, and I'm going to be explaining all the decisions I'm making, of course, and hopefully this can help a lot of you guys out that are stuck in plat and need that little extra boost because you're making some mistakes or you're, you're not confident enough or whatever the case may be. It could be a million things. Uh, but anyways, comment down below your rank right now. I would love to know and what your goal is by the end of rank split number two of season eight. And without further ado, guys, you already know the deal. Let's hop into it and get going. So right here, a little backstory to start off this game. Me, Sultan, in control, just looking for some loot. And uh, we're going to have to rotate down into zone. We're trying to take a fight, okay? We always like to try to take an early fight to get some RP, but sometimes it just doesn't turn out that way. This game, we are definitely looking for a fight. We have two blues, as you can see down low here, and Sultan has a purple. So we are in good shape to uh, take a fight. So we're in the trident, and let's see what happens. But we're heading down right here. I thought, I thought you could actually go up into the rift with the, uh, the vehicle, the trident. I guess you couldn't though. But now there's a team on the left. We decide to go by them. And we decide to hop out right here. And this is a dangerous spot to hop out. Honestly, was not the best spot to hop out whatsoever. Because this hill over here, you're looking at my mouse on the left-hand side of the screen, is a nasty head glitch. We should have pulled up the trident right to the head glitch and then hopped off right there. Instead, we did not. And we almost died because of it. I'm not going to lie to you. We were trying to get different position than uh, we really should have. We should have all been on that head glitch, 100%. I decided to go up and throw my ultimate because Sultan is very low. And Sultan actually ends up getting a knock with his ultimate, which was perfect. That Bloodhound was a little too overextended right there. Uh, I would argue that Sultan was a little too overextended there in the same sense, but their, or their Bloodhound got caught a little more, a little more overextended, so... He got the knock, which was perfect. Then is a 3v2 scenario in our favor. There is something in my eye right now. Can't see. I'm legally blind. So we can see that Gibby bubble. Trying to protect that res. But you want to always apply pressure. I know I'm pausing it, but you want to always apply pressure, guys. When you have a, a guy knocked on the other team, you do not want to let that guy get up. And you always want to see that guy in your sights. You can see the down guy right here over this little ledge. We know he's not getting revived. And we know we have to push them when we have the advantage in a 3v2 scenario. And that's why control is all the way up there. That's why I'm right behind him. So I end up using my lift to get the advantage on this Gibby. We end up getting the knock and two assists for me and the rest of the team got the kill. So I am definitely not complaining about that. It's a decent start to the game. I drop control my gold bag. Okay, that's usually the right move, but he actually did have a gold bag at the time, which I didn't know. Very rare to have two gold bags in the beginning of the game like this. So usually I would just drop him the gold bag and he would give me the purple or the blue because you always want the Gibby or if you have a lifeline on your team to have the gold bag. It's going to be clutch for the reses. And you definitely want to always have the, uh, you start with like half, half your HP and half your shield. So you definitely want to have the, uh, have the Gibby or the lifeline, have the gold bag. All right, guys, we're going to hop back into the action per usual. I'm not going to just play the entire gameplay because then it would get boring. And I'd just be sitting here like this, like the whole time, just watching my own gameplay. And that's not what we're going to do today. So we're hopping into this situation. There is a team over on our left here on our left hand side on this roof. Uh, and we're just trying to rotate out a little bit, swing around and get better position on them. And that's exactly what we're doing. So. So that guy for some 71 shots there. Make sure you to be always calling out your cracks. I didn't get any cracks right there, but always be calling out your damage in general and what color shields everybody has. I need a new chair, man. This thing is squeaking up a storm. All right, so that was actually perfect by uh, Control was on the right side, I believe, right there. He was calling out that the guy in front of me, the Bloodhound, was like 40 HP or low or whatever. So I focused the Bloodhound. 
before I focused on this guy on the roof. And then you can see I'm going to switch my attention directly to the guy on the roof because that's the most dangerous guy in the scenario uh, in general. He's even more dangerous than this guy down here. But just since we had this guy was low and this guy apparently was cracked armor because he's shielding up, uh, we're going to focus this guy first and then worry about him secondary. So I say that I'm going to lift up, throw my ult on him. He makes a good play and gets up and out of there. Actually throws his ult on me. That was a pretty good play by that horizon. And I can see this guy in front of me through the smoke. Control actually knocks him, which is perfect. And then we wipe the squad, which is amazing. Nothing crazy there. But it's just the little things that you guys don't really see on an every game basis. Like if you're playing in gold lobbies, you're not going to be seeing like the crazy communication between teammates of, oh, he's cracked, he's cracked or whatever. Well, you're going to see that. Okay. You're going to say he's cracked, but you're not going to see like a pinpoint number of damage that you're doing and Gibby blue armor, Gibby purple armor, whatever armor Gibby has, whatever armor Bloodhound has. As soon as you get those that intel everything becomes easier and it all comes full circle and then once you get that first guy down you can ultimately push the other two and it should be an easy fight for you all right guys so let's pick it up right back here and control sees enemies in this building right here so you can see there's a guy on the top i don't want to peek him for too long because he has a nasty head glitch on that pipe and control is already balls deep in this scenario so I'm going to just back up control as much as I can. I know they're going to push out at him. Spray my little Spitfire ass off. And yeah, there you go. That squad wipe was pretty simple because control already did some damage. I had to just bait and switch. Basically, that's what it's called. When control went out of that room, they were not expecting me to be aiming down sights on uh, the crypto and the octane bolt. So I got some decent damage on both. And we could easily wipe that squad after because Sultan came in. Uh, from this right hand door so when you're pushing squads always want to come from multiple angles if we all came from that front door it would not have been good so Sultan came from the right us two came from the front and it worked out perfectly so now i'm not even going to advance it because there is going to be a team right up here and to the left once we push up a little bit more we want to check it out we just wanted to check this out and make sure nobody is ratting over here and what i mean by ratting is there could be like full teams on the very edge of zone or just like solo or duo, duo. <laughs> solo or duo players just waiting. So we want to make sure that we can get all of them out of the game so they don't screw us over later on. And I see a whole team coming here. So instantly, my first thought is uh, there's a whole team coming. Obviously, I tell my team that there's a whole team pushing this way. And I'm playing a head glitch. I could have been playing this head glitch a little bit more cautiously. But I'm playing a head glitch nonetheless. He does not have a great angle right here. So I definitely have the high ground advantage and the better angle. Get some decent shots. Not the best, but decent damage on him. And I'm calling out instantly. Bangalore has purple 70 damage off. And I wrecked that horizon for 100 something. 112. Again, calling that out. And if you guys want me to include the... The only reason I'm not recording the audio for these is because I like to do the gameplay reviews when nobody's talking. So I could talk over like this because it would be impossible uh, with everybody talking at once. But if you want me to leave the audio included for some of these, let me know in the comments below. Because I can definitely do that too. So right here, I'm just making sure that this other team is not on us. Control thinks there's a person to the right over there. Which was an octane, and he's getting out of the scene pretty pretty quickly. So we know we can loot these boxes real quick. And I'm telling Control, just watch over me for a second while I loot these boxes. It's always better to have somebody looking over you than just going for the boxes yourself. And then you get melted and then complain about nobody watching over you. You know what I mean? The unlimited HP jump pad. I wanted to destroy that jump pad only because... Um, only so they couldn't push us later on. And we do actually hear this res over here. So we push right back over to the res. 
and they're rezzing directly on us which is perfect so that that could be some easy rp for us even though we already have max and so right there instantly we hear that there's another squad uh gibby says there's another squad and i'm getting shot from this building so i am calling out instantly there's another team there's a third party in this building and i'm making sure sultan and control know and they were very uh persistent on pushing this team in front but i had to be vocal and i had to let them know that we are going to instantly get third party so just be ready for that scenario and so they decide to back off just a little bit just enough actually So we have this team in front of us pinched between us and the other team, which is perfect. Good smoke grenade by uh, Sultan blocking the window view so they couldn't get shots on me. All right, so we're pushing into this building now. We're just going to try to run these guys out of the building, basically. It turns out they're not actually in there, so they must have rotated backwards to the left. So now we have a 1v squad v squad basically. That was a terrible thermite. How did that thermite not get there? Like what? Unbelievable. <clears throat> So we know we're getting some decent shots on these guys. And I call out that that Wraith is portaling because nobody else saw. Uh, but I noticed the Wraith is portaling. And we're going to notice that there is another Wraith portal on our right. Once we get up here. So the last guy takes the portal. And now we're just looking straight ahead. And Sultan calls out that there is another portal on the right side that we have to take care of first. Which is right there. So I decided to get us on the roof. We make the call to get up on the roof. And now right here, it's kind of a... It was definitely a weird situation. These guys were playing inside very cautiously. And they're playing in this uh, little side room over here. And I was just poking in and out, getting damage as much as I could so that eventually we could wipe this squad but when you're fighting like this for a long time you're gonna notice this was more of like a banter fight than anything for the most part these teams could instantly come over here and try to fight us in third party but luckily they didn't i would always be making sure that someone stays on lookout even though it's tough uh someone's got to stay on lookout because the third parties on olympus are absolutely tragic this split you're going to notice I'm going to hop in here and get a lot of damage on these guys over and over. Peeking, getting back. So instantly that's 100 something. I swap armors, go right back in in case he's still peeking that angle. And then it's a different guy. I'm going to take a cell quick. I should have honestly just picked up that red armor again. It would have been more beneficial for me. But I'm just trying to get a nice angle on these guys. Another 105 on Wraith. I'm calling that out every single time. And then right here is where we basically win this gunfight. Sultan and I both go to this head glitch right here. The 105 crack on Wraith gave us the opportunity to push over to this head glitch. And that that won us the fight. As you're going to see, we get some easy shots while control is on the other door. We're just getting all types of damage in there. And we are just the assist masters at this point. Two kills, seven assists. Two kills, eight assists now. We're just we're just killing it on the assists. We're just we're just a team player. What can I say, man? So once we're done looting all these boxes, you can see there's four squads left. Uh, and we are gonna skip ahead a little bit. Skip ahead a little bit. Ooh. Right, so right here we are actually moving up on these other squads to get a better position i gotta move my mouse so that thing can go away on the bottom of the screen but right here i'm telling uh sultan i believe was on the roof with me uh to focus this guy on like a three two one shot and what that means is like basically 
count down three, two, one, and then shoot the same exact guy that you're speaking of. So let's say it was Horizon. Uh, you'd be like, yeah, we're going to three, two, one, Horizon. Ready? Three, two, one, blah, shoot her. Uh, but she ended up moving a little behind the, the crates, which kind of sucked for me. Like exactly at the time we were about to start shooting. So I end up pelting these guys with nades to get them out of that area. Just want to get them out of the game, basically. Let them get in the kill on Bloodhound, and then the Horizon gets killed by the other team. So now we know. Now we now we know there are three squads left. Okay, and we got this team over here. We know the other team has to be somewhere behind us, and I believe we knew it was a solo. And Control's gonna end up calling that out in a couple minutes here. I don't even know if it's gonna be a couple minutes, but it's a short period after, I would say. All right, so we fast forward to this part. There is an Octane up here on the pipes. And he's going to end up jumping down as soon as I go up on my lift here. This was the solo I was talking about earlier. So he's right there on the pipes. I didn't actually know exactly where he was until right there. Get the kill on him. And then it is a squad v squad. So during this situation, Sultan already threw his ult. He got some hits on it. Not... Not the most amount of damage ever, but I decided to throw my ultimate to try to suck them into that and we can get some shots off on them in the open. I should have thrown it a little more to the right so they would have been in zone. That would have been even better so they took a little more damage, but nonetheless, it was a good ultimate. I threw it right on the corner so that guy got sucked off the top. And so right here, I'm pushing up to their bubble or their heat shield or whatever this was at the moment. and. Probably wasn't the best push because controls all the way back here. You can see on the map. I'm all the way in the fight. Sultan's backing me up right behind me, but I do get some good damage on these guys. And you're going to see right here exactly why Horizon is so awesome. I end up going up right when I'm about to die and still being able to pelt these guys with bullets. I actually end up not going down at all. So we're way too overextended. I jump out 81, 84 flesh. Just hip fire spraying, and then I go up in the air. End up cracking all three of them. And then we drop, get the shots on Gibby. And that's how it's done. It was, it's definitely intense. I will say, once you get to platinum, and then you go to diamond, and then master's pred, all those lobbies are super intense. Platinum, I think, is the cutoff where it gets like, it's a big jump. It's a big jump from gold to platinum. That's why I think a lot of people get stuck in those tiers, gold and platinum. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a thumbs up. And if you learned anything, obviously, hit that subscribe button. You're missing out on future videos if you don't. Anyways, guys, it has been Sweat. I hope you're having a wonderful rest of your day. And peace out.